Hey guys, welcome to the Sunday video. For today's video, we got another car review. It's a nice, beautiful day in Minnesota, North Dakota again. Wind's blowing like crazy. I don't know exactly how cold it is, but it's freaking cold. So I was gonna get some exterior shots of this car, but you're just gonna have to deal with it. We ain't doing that. I wasn't gonna stand outside. Today we are in a 2017 Civic Si. All right guys, like I said, today we're in a 2017 Civic Si. This car belongs to my friend Chelsea. I met Chelsea in the car scene a couple of years ago, and she's had a couple different cool cars. She had a GTI Golf, she had an Audi Quattro Turbo A4, she's had a couple of cool little cars, she had an S2000 which I sadly never got to drive before she got rid of it, but now she's landed in this Civic Si, and from what I know she's been pretty happy with it. Now these 2017 Civic Si's came with a tweaked version of the lesser Civic's 1.5 liter turbo engine. I don't know exactly what was changed, forgive me, I'm not well versed on my Hondas, but this thing had like 10 point something to one compression so it was a fairly high compression engine and they kind of they're just little screamers i kind of feel like this poor car got overshadowed um is this like the forgotten civic si because right around the time when this was released was when the type r was rumored the type r came out and that is obviously a much more potent older brother to this car so did the civic si get overlooked and should have it been overlooked or is it something that is a really nice option for a lot of people looking to get into the enthusiast community we're going to find that out i'll find some fun roads for us and then we'll get back to you so the first thing with the civic si that's really kind of pleasantly surprised me is how twitchy this thing is i mean this car is set up the suspension is really stiff and you twitch the steering wheel and the car goes exactly where you want it to go and it just kind of surprises me because again is this kind of the civic that's been forgotten about you know even myself not not owning either one of the cars, just all the talk about the Type R really kind of got my focus away from this this generation SI just because something that was supposed to be so much better came out. The problem with the Type R is when those things came out, guys, it was completely laughable what they were asking for those things. I mean, you're talking 60 grand with the dealer markup for a Civic. And I'm sorry, the Civic SI looks amazing. I'd love to drive one. I think it's a it's great what they've accomplished with that car, but 60 grand for a Civic, I mean, come on. The average person is gonna go for something more like this. But I think maybe those people started to look at other options because this car seemed to be overshadowed by the presence of the Type R. So the goal today is to figure out if that should or shouldn't be the case. I'm just amazed too by how easy this thing is to drive. I mean, granted, I realize it's a Civic, but it's most cars that I get into to review, I have to spend like a little bit of time getting used to the car, learning the car, feeling how the shifter feels, feeling how the clutch pedal feels, stuff like that. This thing I got in and granted, I didn't start filming immediately, but I felt like I could have. I didn't really have to figure anything out. Most cars, I give myself a little bit of seat time before I really start digging into the car. I feel like I've been driving this thing for years. I mean, that's just how easy it is to drive. The clutch is nice and direct. And the shifter in this thing is very good. It's very notchy and precise. It almost feels like it's gated. It has no slop or play in it at all. It has a nice, just a really nice feel to it. It feels nice and notchy and I really, really like it. It's not too heavy, but it's, it's kind of this sensation where the shifter feels nice and light, but it's also very direct. And I really appreciate that. Like I said, that was like the only thing I didn't like about that Audi TT that we reviewed is that the shifter just felt awful. It was just, there was a lot of slop and play in there. This thing feels nice and direct and I really appreciate, and I really appreciate the feel that it has. We're gonna turn onto this back road here and do a little pull for you guys, see how this thing feels. So like I said, you don't buy one of these cars obviously for straight line performance. We did a little first gear roll on, went all the way to fifth gear, and we went around kind of a sweeping corner and just the handling of this thing, it just feels stiff and connected to the ground. And I think the other really impressive thing about this, and I've said this about a lot of Hondas that I've driven, not necessarily gotten to review, but driven, is that you don't really feel any torque steer. Posna does an awesome job of that. Your torque steer comes in obviously because one of your shafts is bigger than the shaft on the other side on a front wheel drive and you get that torsional twist and that causes the car's steering wheel to feel like it's gonna jerk out of your hand. I just gave this thing everything she got and I didn't really feel any torque steer and I went around this kind of banked sweeping corner 
which was the whole purpose of doing the pull there and it just felt you know it wasn't super fast it was fast enough to be entertaining and again this is one of those engines you kind of got to you kind of got to wind out a little bit but more impressive than that was the handling it just felt completely planted to the ground and i think honda's always done a really good job of that but especially in this in this segment you look at a lot of cars that are supposed to be fun front wheel drive cars like a celica or a nissan Sentra r or whatever and they're just they're really manila it's more a car that looks sporty but doesn't necessarily feel good honda made this little car it's front wheel drive in that same segment right but it it looks the part and it has the same layout as a lot of those sports cars but it actually has the heart of a sports car while it's not super powerful, it still feels really nice. It's It's got a certain personality to it that you don't find in a lot of other cars. I've driven a few Celica GTSs, stuff like that, front wheel drive, and they're just kind of boring. I mean, they took a motor out of a four cylinder Camry and stuck it in the Celica, which is a good looking car, but it just doesn't play the part. These Civics are completely different. These Civics are one of the only legitimate options for a truly sporty car in the front wheel drive segment. They feel nice, they handle nice, and most importantly, the engine has, the engines have proved themselves. They're just fun little cars to drive. Do another roll on. Like I said, it's awesome. You don't feel any of that torque steer. It's not there. It's pretty much non-existent, which is usually my beef with front wheel drive cars. Why do Honda's engines always feel so good? And I'd like to start out like this. Anytime you have a manual transmission in a car, usually you're gonna have fun. I've owned a lot of B-series pickups. You know that if you've been on my channel before. Um, but, and those things are slow as hell. They got like 85 horsepower from the factory on a good day. And even those little trucks, single overhead cam, archaic engines are fun to drive with a five-speed Honda it's like their motors are so good that even if you have an automatic they're still fun and that's a bold statement my buddy Griffin had an Accord back in tech school and that thing was an automatic and we had a lot of fun in that car you could feel the you could feel it pull and it just the engines in these Hondas just have a certain personality to them and I think a large part of that is because Honda started out as a motorcycle company and when you're building motorcycles, you're basically just building engines. You're building engines with two wheels and handlebars attached. So I think when Honda decided they were gonna start building cars, they carried over a lot of that personality and characteristics from their motorcycles into their car engines. And it really shows, these things are fun. I'm just really impressed by this thing's twitchiness. I mean, anytime I jerk the wheel, there's no body roll and it's just exactly where I want it to be. This thing is like begging you to take it out on a road course or to autocross it or something like that. Just can't get over how stiff this thing feels. You drop it into third gear and get the RPMs up there and you take off and it's just like this thing is planted to the road, which for a front wheel drive car isn't something that you find very often. So I think Honda did a really good job of balancing this car. The way they set up the transaxle and everything and the axles in the car so that you don't have a lot of that torque steer and just how the suspension is set up. I mean, it's very stiff, so I'm not saying it's like, it feels like a touring car or anything like that. But for what this car is for, for handling, for having fun, for being a spirited driving car, this thing is awesome. It just feels like I'm stuck to the road and it gives you a lot of confidence that this thing, this thing wants to be driven hard. It wants to be tossed around. And in the front wheel drive segment, like I said, a lot of these sports cars, sporty cars, whatever you want to call them, they got the look and that's about all they got. But this little Civic seems to have everything. We're going to shift her down into second gear and we're going to go around this sweeping corner here and just see how it handles. Nice and flat throughout that corner. Sweeping corners, turns, twisty roads, high banks, I think that's where this thing's going to shine. Like I said, if you're looking for straight line performance, this thing isn't gonna wow you. It's, and I don't mean that this car is slow. It's definitely not slow. It definitely has enough pep to keep you entertained, but it's not a it's not a drag car. This thing was made to be tossed around a little bit. Flat coming out. I think when the Civic Type R came out, I think people thought that the Civic Si was gonna be downgraded. Not necessarily because that's what Honda was trying to do. I just think that people thought when something so much better came out, they're gonna give less attention to this car. And I really don't think that's the case. I think that the two were probably developed together. And while the Civic Type R is that much better, obviously, I still think that you shouldn't let that take away from this car. Because like I said, realistically, this is the car that most of us would be looking at purchasing, not the Type R. And I think that this car deserves more credit. I've had a lot of fun today. I think if that you're looking to get into the car world and you want something that's 
entertaining and fun and you also want it to be reliable and not give you any trouble, this would be a great car. I've really enjoyed my time driving the 2017 Civic Si. So with that guys, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this Sunday video for a little car review. Huge thanks to Chelsea for letting me drive her Civic Si today. I really like your car. What'd you think of the video? Give me a like, give me a thumbs up. Tell me in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like. Make sure you subscribe, smash that bell button. See you next time.